Welcome to the latest project. Today we're going to show you how to build a queen size bed frame out of cheap 2x4s that only takes four bolts, one of these, and one of these to put together. It's cheap, it's solid, and hey, you can sleep on it. So my youngest daughter who lives at home, this is home, is going to be leaving fairly soon to get her own place. And she needs a bed frame for this queen size bed she's got. The bed frame has to be transportable by not pickups because she has a sedan. It also needs to be able to be put together easily with a minimum of tools. Now she's pretty good with tools, but she doesn't have a lot of tools. So this bed can be put together with a wrench, and we found it earlier tonight, a hammer because we had to coax some parts into place. But it's simple to put together. It's also cheap. We built it out of mostly 2 by 4s the first step is to take a pair of 2x6 boards and cut them off at 84 inches. Then two 2x4s are cut off at 74 inches. These will be glued to the 2x6s we just cut. As promised, here's that glue up. The 74 inch 2x4s are centered on the 84 inch 2x6s. Everything is glued together to form the left and right rails that will support the mattress. We're using glue here because we're trying to reduce or eliminate as many screws as possible. Glue is strong enough for this job and eliminating the screws reduces costs, which is good because, well, we're cheap. The glue is dry, the clamps did their job, and we have a strong bond for both rails. The completed rails are sanded to remove the vendor printed stuff and also to make them look nicer. We're not going to paint them, so this is all the finishing we're going to do. So the idea behind this design is simplicity and ease of construction. So what we have is we have two rails, left and right rails, that are made of two by sixes. They can handle a lot of weight and they're very strong. Inside, what we just glued in, are these two by fours here that gives us a shoulder here and here. And we take those shoulders and we put the slats just like this to support the mattress. Now when we built one of these beds before, we had 54 screws holding in all these slats, two on each side of the slat holding it in. But the point of this construction is to use as few tools as possible and make it super simple to build. So this rail here keeps the slat from moving left and right. Those rails have to be supported by something, so it's time to make the legs. And those legs are 11 inch lengths of two x four, which will give us an eight inch clearance off the floor so things can be stored underneath the bed. Then the legs are sanded to remove any splinters and also to make them look nicer because these are gonna be visible. And after they're sanded, they're glued and clamped together for the next step. This kind of work is a lot easier when there's two of you. You can kind of run an assembly line and get things done a lot faster. Plus, it's fun to have people in the shop with you. I highly recommend it. So the legs are just two 2x4s that we've glued together. Nice and strong, incredibly cheap, and really fancy. Once again, the clamps come off, the glue's done its job, and now we have 11 inch long 4x4 pine legs that cost us practically nothing. Each one of the four legs will be held on by three 3 8 inch bolts. Two of them will go into the main rails and those are the holes that we're drilling now. Each leg is then used as a template to drill the holes into the rail. We do this because, well, we're lazy, but it's also pretty accurate. Then back to the drill press for slightly larger holes for the T-nuts we'll be using. More on that later. But before we attach the legs, we need the header and footer board. So we're cutting those now. These are five feet long and are sanded because they're gonna be visible and we don't want any splinters. These two five foot boards are very important because they're held in by two bolts on the foot of the bed and two bolts on the other end on the head of the bed. If you take these four bolts out, the entire bed breaks down into sticks and you can carry it up individual pieces. That was the point. This whole thing can fit in a small car because it tears down and you can put it together just by sinking four bolts into it and be done. Bolts! Using the leg as a template again, a hole is drilled for the header board. Then the T-nuts are hammered into those larger holes we made earlier. T-nuts are great because you can't lose them. They're part of the bed. Our drill bit was too short, so we used the drill press to finish the third bolt hole in each leg. Now we have four legs, all with T-nuts installed, and we can put the bolts in. Well, we can put the bolts in after we hit it with a hammer. 
See how easy this is? You just put the bolt in, you tighten it, and the T-nut stays in place. And if you ever have to disassemble the bed, you're not going to lose your T-nuts. A 2x4 rafter hanger is added to the header and footer of the bed. This will support a center rail that will support the slats and keep the bed from sagging in the middle, because you don't want your bed to sag in the middle. The center rail slides into those rafter holders quite easily. And there's no need to use screws or anything else to support it because the slats and weight of the mattress are going to hold it in place. Then we cut the support slats. Each one is 5 feet long and fits in the rail on the left and right and the center rail supports the center. These are 8 foot 2x4s which leaves 3 feet of scrap for each slat. Ever wonder why we have so many scraps? This is why. Okay, back to our super high tech model. I know, I know, we only build the best for you. Remember how I said before that these vertical 2x6 pieces kept the slats from moving to the left and right. That's very secure. But there's nothing to keep these slats from moving towards the headboard or the footboard or getting out of kilter or even falling out. Well, in the previous bed, we had used 56 screws to hold in all these slats. But the goal here is to try to build this without requiring tools for assembly and making things simple. What we want to do is just lay the slats in place and forget about it. So to that end, we made these. These are other pieces of 2x4 we cut shorter and we just put them right here, glue them right here onto the rails. So they separate the slats. So we put another slat in, it can't move and we just put more of them here. We call these teeth and we mounted them all up and down the rails so that to put the slats in you just drop them in and walk away. No screwdriver, no nothing. Piece of cake. To make the teeth, I just walked over to that giant pile of three foot long 2x4 scrap that I just created, grab a couple of them, and cut them off at one inch thick lengths. And if I make a mistake here, hey, it's no problem at all because I've got about 12 more of these scraps on the floor at my feet. Plenty of wood to go around. Those strips are then cut into 3.75 inch lengths to make the teeth. As you can see here, I'm using a piece of 2x4 to give me the 3.75 inch length, so I just push it against the 2x4 and cut, and then we sand everything. I'm sanding the slats, and my daughter is sanding the teeth. Once again, having more than one person in the shop makes work fun and fast. How fast? Well, we actually built this whole bed in about two hours. With everything sanded, it was time to put the teeth in. The way we did this was to use 2x4 cutoffs to represent the slats, and then put teeth in between each one. So we put down the fake slat, glued a tooth next to it, moved the fake slat to the other side of the just glued tooth, and glued another one, and just worked our way to the center. The center of the bed has two slats for extra strength. With the structure in place and all the teeth glued, it's time to put in the center leg. This is just an 11 inch 2x4 with two bolts. Also using T-nuts, this will support the center of the bed to keep it from sagging. And with the attachment of this little piece of 2x4, the project is complete and ready to move upstairs. Because we don't allow sleeping in the shop. That would be weird. Welcome to the upstairs bedroom. Now we're going to put this together. Now that the bed frame is complete, all we have to do is put the mattress on top of it. See how it holds all those slats down? Those slats aren't going anywhere. The only problem is I hit the ceiling when I put it in, which is what all that white stuff is. But ceiling plaster dust is easily removed, and with the bedstread and pillows on it, it looks like a real bed. And if it ever needs to move, which it will, all you have to do is take those four bolts out, and the whole thing can be carried out easily. So that's it. That's our cheap 2x4 bed frame that can support a queen-size mattress and can be carried around in any vehicle you have, even if you have a pickup. Thanks to our patrons for helping us buy stuff like this. You helped us buy these cheap 2x4s and made it possible for my daughter to sleep at night, so thank you. If you like what you see here on the channel, like and subscribe. Ring that bell so you'll see stuff in the future. We've always got new stuff coming out, and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So check out our other stuff and comment on our stuff and tell us what you think. That's all we got for tonight. Hey, Dad. Huh?
Can I go to bed now, please? Yeah, okay. Thank you.